It's a commitment that requires discipline, perseverance, and above all, love. For it is only when love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength that we can truly offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. The second aspect of this commitment is to be holy and acceptable to God. To be holy means to be set apart, to be different from the world. It means to live according to God's standard, not the world's standard. It means to strive for purity, righteousness, and godliness in all areas of our lives. To be acceptable to God means to live in a way that pleases Him. To do what is right in His eyes, not what is right in our own eyes. This is a high calling, one that we cannot achieve on our own but with God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit we can strive to be holy and acceptable to God the third aspect of this commitment is to be transformed by re re renewal of our minds this transformation is not superficial change but a deep inner transformation that affects our thoughts our attitudes our values our desires this begins in the mind, but eventually permits every aspect of our lives, which enable us to discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The Greek word for transform in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 is metamorpho, from which we get in the English metamorphosis. This word is used only four times in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 17 verse 2 and Mark chapter 9 verse 2. It is used to describe the transfiguration of Jesus when his appearance changed and his clothes became dazzling white. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory which comes from. It is used to describe the transformation of believers into the image of Christ from the one degree of glory to another. In all these instances, metamorpho denotes a profound and radical change, a change that is both internal and external. Isang pagbabago po, hindi lang sa panlabas, kundi pag sa panloob. A change that is visible and noticeable. This commitment to God also involves a rejection of conformity to the world. The world has its own values, its own standard, its own way of doing things. But as followers of Christ, we are called to be different, to be countercultural, to swim against the tide. This, it, uh, this is not easy, for the pull of the world is strong. And this pressure to conform is intense. But with God's help, we can resist the pressure. We can stand firm in our faith. We can live according to God's standard, not the world's standard. And lastly, this commitment to God involves discernment of His will. This is active seeking of God's will, a de deliberate effort to discern what is good and acceptable and perfect. This discernment requires wisdom, understanding, and discernment. It requires a deep knowledge of God's word, a close relationship with God, and a sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's a discernment that leads to action, a discernment that results in obedience, a discernment that transforms our lives and the lives of those around us. Church, let's remember that our faith is not a one-time event, but a lifelong journey. It's a journey of transformation, a journey of becoming more like Christ each day, and it's a journey that we don't have to walk alone. We have each other and we have a God who loves us more than we can ever comprehend. So let's leave this place with a renewed sense of purpose. 
a renewed commitment to God, and renewed faith in His love. Let's go out into the world, not conforming to its ways, but being transformed by the renewal of our minds. Let's believe in sacrifice, holy and acceptable Amen. to God. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we meditated. May it be our guide in our lives. And as we continue to uh, reaffirm our commitment to you, through the sacred act of baptism, we come before you with humble hearts and grateful spirits. We thank you for the gift of life and for the grace that sustains us each day. Lord, as we prepare to enter the waters of baptism, once again, we ask for your presence to be with us in a special way. May your Holy Spirit descend upon us, filling us with your presence, your love, and your wisdom. Grant us the courage to let go of the past and to embrace the new beginnings that you offer us. We confess our sins before you, knowing that you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash us clean, O Lord, and renew a right of spirit within us. As we reaffirm our baptism, may we be reminded of your unconditional love for us and your promise to walk with us each step of the way. Help us to live as faithful disciples, following in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ. We lift up this time of reaffirmation to you, trusting in your unfailing mercy and grace. May your name be glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.